Welcome back to Tom's Tech Chat. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that I'm so excited about. I am finally in the position where I get to review resumes and sit in on interviews for entry-level IT positions. And I wanted to give you guys some insight by giving you five of the most common mistakes that I've been seeing. So in this video, we're going to go over all of that. Make sure you stay until the end because number five is the most important one. And also at the end, I'm going to give you a template for the resume that lands me thing interviews so that way you guys can take your resume to the next level. So let's get started. So first of all, um, I'm going to go over kind of from top to bottom on some of my biggest issues that I've been seeing with resumes. First is the summary section. Um, a lot of times people will put like a little summary, a little blurb on the top just summarizing their experience. And what I'm noticing is that people are using this section to just kind of review the things that are already on the resume. It's kind of very generalized, it's not specific, and it doesn't add too much to the resume. So that's causing two issues. First, you're wasting space because you're just using things that they are going to see further down on the page. And B, you're not using that to explain why you are qualified for the position. So what I like to tell people is if, if you are going to put a little blurb at the top is to make it a summary of your qualifications and personalize that to the job description. So in that summary, make it like a three sentence little um, blurb. Don't just summarize your experience, but highlight the experience that is applicable to that job description. Use some of the keywords from that job description and make it a clear three sentence summary on why you are qualified for the position that you're applying for. And if you aren't going to customize it, then I would suggest just not including that section. Second, it is so important that the skills section is utilized to the best of your ability. So what you want to do is that you want to make sure that you are not wasting the skill section on buzzwords. And when I say that is if you are a recruiter or a hiring manager and you're looking at resumes all day, you are going to see the word collaborated. You're going to see team player. You're going to see um, communicator over and over and over again. And after a while, those words mean nothing because those are skills that they can't be verified. There's no way to truly prove it. And it's just taking up space in your resume without adding anything. Nobody's going to say that they're a bad communicator. Right? Everybody wants to say that they have that skill. Don't waste space on your resume for putting just random buzzwords on there. The things that you do want to include on in that skill section is A, skills that were specifically highlighted in the job description. So you want to bring in some of those keywords from the job description into your skill section. Also, you want to um, include any technical skills you have. So those are the things that will really make you stand out if you're applying for a technical position is to include more of your technical skills in that section. Now, soft skills are important, but I'm going to show you a much better way to incorporate it and to demonstrate it on your resume versus just listing it in a bullet point in your skill section. The third mistake is also in the skill section, and that is do not include anything in your skill section that you are not comfortable including or speaking to in a job interview. So it's all too often that people will have taken a Udemy class for two days or they did some coursework on a class three years ago and on their resume that they are saying that they know Java, that they um, have these skills and they don't really have them. When you bring it up in the resume if you ask, or if you bring it up in an interview or if you ask them the question, they don't really know it. Now, if it is, if, now, now, if you are a student, and you have taken coursework and things and you do want to incorporate that, what you would say is coursework in to highlight the fact that, no, you don't really have the skill, you might not have it in a professional basis, but you do have some exposure to it from school. That's perfectly fine, but don't make it seem that you know a skill that you don't because you don't want that to come out in an interview and make you look bad. The fourth mistake is having a distracting design. It is so common that people go on Canva or Microsoft Word and they just pick these really pretty uh, designs, but these designs are actually distracting from your experience. So the way I explain it to people is like this. On average, people spend seven seconds looking at your resume. Don't waste one of those seconds being them looking, thinking about your design. You want that all of that time to be dedicated to examining your experience and how you're actually qualified for the position. When you have a distracting design, you're actually distracting from yourself. Also, another just functional reason, a lot of companies print in black and white. And all too often I see people have resumes that when you print them in black and white, they're unreadable. 
Um, so typically my recommendation is to keep your resume in either plain black and white format or if you do use color to keep it very minimal. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. If you are in a field like graphic design or a field like digital marketing where you wanna show some of that creativity. But for the most part, if you're going for a general IT position, lean more towards the simple side and rely on your content versus your design. And the fifth point, and this is the most important, do not waste your experience section. That is a majority of your resume. That is the most important part. It's the meat of the resume, if you will. And all too often I see people waste their experience section on just listing job duties. When I'm doing my resume, I use the air method. If you Google it, nothing will probably come up. I came up with it myself. So the air method stands for A, action, I, integer, R, result. Okay, so if you are writing a bullet point, you want an action word. And that action word is where you can bring in those soft skills and some of those things that would just be meaningless buzzwords in a skill section to actually have an action and a meaning in your experience section. That's where you can say you communicated, you collaborated, you managed. That's where you want to bring in those terms into your experience section. I is the integer, so you want numbers. You want to quantify anything that you can. You want to put in statistics, you want to put in figures to back up the impact that you made at the company. Which brings us to R is the result. Every bullet point should have an impact that you made or a change that you made or something that showed that you were making an effect at work. All right, so just as a quick demonstration, when I was doing my resume and I was coming from a help desk position, I could have said that I took incoming troubleshooting calls. And that is what you will see on a lot of people's resume. But you tell me if that sounds better than this. Provided over the phone support for a 7,500 employee company handling an average of 40 calls a day with an 85% first call resolution rate. If you were reading that resume, which one's going to have more impact? When you have those numbers, when you have that, um, those figures, you are backing up the impact that you made and you are making it actually have some substance. If somebody reads that, they go, okay, not only was she taking troubleshooting calls, she was good at it. She was affected by getting things resolved in the first call. She took a lot of calls within a day, so she's used to a high volume environment. You get a lot more information by using those statistics and those figures. Right, so that is just a quick run through of the five most common mistakes that I see. If you guys want my resume template, make sure that you click the link down in my description. It's going to take you to my website to sign up for my email list. As your freebie, you will get it automatically as soon as you sign up. You will get my resume template and also a quick cheat sheet of all the do's and don'ts for your resume so that way you can go back and review and make sure that you aren't making some of those mistakes. So guys, that's all I have for you today. If you are interested in any more of these career tips or these insights that I have now from my position, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next video.